What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. It's episode 608 of The O Show. We are presented by TickPick.com. Do you ever use TickPick.com? I do now. It's so it's the number one ticket marketplace. Yeah. They're based in New York City, no hidden fees. So if you're getting Super Bowl tickets, waste management open tickets, which is going to be a crazy week next week yeah. uh, or two weeks, whenever it is. Um, it tells you straight up how much the tickets are without adding on those hidden fees at the end, which StubHub does, which SeatGeek does, which Ticketmaster does. It's what they all do. Right. But not TickPick.com. Use that promo code capital OSHOW20 for $20 off your next order over at TickPick.com. We're also brought to you by Rack Financial Merchant Services. Um, if you haven't heard of Rack Financial yet, ha- head on over to RackFinancial.com. Come see the results with us. Um, we have a very special treat in the house today. We got Earn Your Booze. Um, the founder of Earn Your Booze, Justin Cross, I told you when Dane hooked us up, I'm like, I'm going through my list right now. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I wrote his name down on my yeah. list of people to reach out to. Uh, but Earn Your Booze is is the business. He's got a new line out um, right now. What do we got right here? We got the uh, Dead Hanger Pale Ale just came out. You got an app coming out as well. We were just talking about your partnership with Andy Elliott um, in the financial space as well. You got, you're wearing a a gajillion different hats. A lot of different hats. It should probably be one of those jester hats, you know, know. with all the different things hanging off of it, yeah. Those aren't that attractive, though. No, no. but that's kind of what it feels <laughs> like sometimes, you know? But uh, you, you got a lot going on, especially, like, let's get into it since we were talking about it. Um, you getting hooked up with Andy, you even said it yourself, like, okay, let's let's go talk to this salesman, because you never really truly know what these guys are like. I mean, I watched Brad Lee for years, too, and the first time I met him, I'm like, okay, he's a pretty down-to-earth dude, where right. he kind of, like, plays a character on camera, almost. Were you kind of skeptical at first at meeting Andy, or were you obviously open to it, and then you realize, like, oh, wow, we actually have something going here? Yeah, I was totally open to it because Dane and Brad Lee both, like, vouched for me, like, Andy's yeah. the shit. You got to go meet him. Go yeah. meet his team. You know, they got a lot of stuff going on. So I went in there, you know, like, looking forward to meeting them. I went to one of his seminars. He jumped off stage. We went out back and talked for a few minutes when someone else is on stage, and Dude, it only took me probably five minutes to realize he's not just a sales guy. Mm -hmm. He was talking fitness, family. He was talking, you know, work hard. Like, he was talking a lot of things that, like, weren't, like, just closing and objections and sales tactics and all that kind of stuff. So right away, I was like, all right. This guy is not just a sales guy. He's, he's got a lot more going on here. Yeah. So we hit it off right off the bat. How much did you know about sales, like, going way back, like, pre, pre-military, like, pre-Navy? How in tune were you with sales, how it worked, and how people in sales kind of acted? Sure. So my first job was at Sam's Club. I was pushing carts, so not a lot nice. of sales there. Uh, my second one was at Ultimate Electronics, and I did get some sales experience there. So, you know, we were selling TVs and car stereos and electronics and stuff like that. And I realized right away that, like, sales really was like helping somebody, you know, because they came in to buy a stereo. And it wasn't just about getting them, like, the most expensive stereos, getting the stereo that they fit their house, fit their needs, fit their budget, you know. So I think I learned right away. I was like, oh, sales is actually just hearing a person out and trying Mm -hmm. to connect the dots and get them what they need. You know, so that that was the end of my sales experience until I joined the Navy. Then I was in aerospace for a while, and now it's all come back around, and I've been selling, you know, through my own business now for about six years. Which is like the peak year. I feel like that six, seven-year threshold is where it's like, okay, we're finally hitting it, or we need to really rethink what we're doing here. Yeah. And you guys, fortunately, are hitting it, which is really cool to see. Dude, it's been a crazy thing because we started Earn Your Booze like six years ago. That was a lifestyle I was living in the Navy. You know, like you had to be in shape. You had to, you know, run and do all that shit. But sailors also drink and cuss a lot, you know. So the the mentality kind of started there. Um, But then afterwards, like I was uh, working with people, helping them lose the beer gut, especially like brewers. Like I was brewing. I was also working with First Form. Yep. And I started to help people just kind of like be healthier in that space, which because it's not a healthy space to be in, you know, hospitality, bars, breweries, all that kind of stuff. Um, But yeah, it evolved into, uh, you know, something that we launched about six years ago. And right away, all the big liquor brands were like, oh, we can't really talk about health, but uh you guys can. Mm-hmm. So like it just right away, it just took off. We were in Men's Health Magazine, Chilled Magazine, Liquor.com, Small Business Journal, and it just kind of became a thing like right yeah. away. It's well, it's crazy. a niche that nobody's ever really tapped into. No, it's not because, uh, I mean, you, you're obviously a fit guy. You know, you know a lot of trainers and stuff. And yeah. a lot of the fitness industry, you, you know exactly what I'm going to say. I think it's chicken, broccoli, rice, no booze. You know, just kind of hate your life. They want you yeah. to train like you're Dry going on stage. Yeah. Most people don't want that. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of trainers will also like 
kind of look down on you, call you a piece of shit if you do drink. And it's like, well, look, dude, most people do work hard Monday through Friday. They have a job. They have a career. When the weekend comes around, they do want to kind of check off, you know, get away from work. You know, so they do want to have some drinks. So I was like, you know what? How about we help those people because they typically are neglected by, you know, a lot of the fitness industry. Mm. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of people who like to drink. Like you mentioned, being in the Navy, you guys are sailors. You're drinking what, whatever you could find. And, yeah. I've, and I've heard in multiple interviews that you did where it's like, I wouldn't even drink half the stuff today that I was drinking back then. No way. Like, yeah. do you think there's like not professional drinkers out there, but like people who consider themselves like drinkers, like this is a part of my life, this is my lifestyle, and it kind of helped you kind of navigate how Earn Your Booze was going to be once you turned it not only into just like obviously a mentality, but manifested that into a reality in business? I mean, yeah, because like we've never been like a party brand, you yeah. know, like we've never been like a college, like beer bong, chugging beer or anything like that. We were the first and still are like the only brand that's really taken a serious approach to like health and wellness and fitness for people that do like to drink and, and save up for the weekends, you know, because yeah. and, and what that means is uh, like you're getting that. I think like it really does kind of matter what you drink sometimes, you know, there's a big difference between drinking a 30 pack of Bud Light and having a couple like high end, like blue agave tequilas on the mm -hmm. rocks, really big difference. You know, you can still have a good time. You can still get that little buzz if that's what you're searching for, but like you're not damaging yourself nearly as much as if you're drinking just a ton of crap. So that's one of the things that we do is we educate on like, even if you are going to drink what to drink, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's a lot of mixers, there's a lot of sugars, there's a lot of additives, there's a lot of BS out there. But if you can drink like some high end top shelf stuff, especially if you're not drinking that often, you really can set yourself up to, to have a healthy lifestyle. And how many years worth of research? Because I feel like it falls in line of people being like, there's no way. Just right off the top of your head, any average human being, any average Joe would just tell you like, no way, that's not possible without actually looking into the facts and doing the research. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, it works like mm -hmm. it's 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 science right like we've been researching this we will always continue to research this we know alcohol is not good for us you know we can yeah. just get that out of the bag right there's no like benefit to drinking alcohol like physically right so if you're going to do it there's things you need to do like you need to you need to be in the best shape possible you need to hydrate you need to make sure you're not just hydrated with water but with electrolytes and magnesium and you know stuff like that but then also we always like to say look you got to take care of your responsibilities mm -hmm. work family your career money you know and so when you do decide to have some drinks like you're not like doing it because you're depressed or you're not doing it to escape from anything but if you truly are handling your life you're crushing your life cool, have a little win every once in a while, celebrate some wins, you know, and keep building that momentum up. But we don't ever say like, look, it's, it's Friday, cool, jump in the pool, drink all weekend. We encourage people to set bigger goals that take longer to get, right? So when you do finally get that bigger goal, it just tastes and feels so much better. How you know? many different um, like clientele or people that reach out to you, like where does it kind of range from people that are in shape that do want to continue to live the lifestyle that they have or is it kind of all over the place like people overweight, people even underweight too? Would yeah. you see more and more of today? It's all over the place, honestly. Um, and as far as, like, the booze goes, uh, we always go to, like, beer festivals, cocktail festivals, all over the place. Like, we'll be at Strong Beer Festival, Salt River Fields, here yeah. uh, next month. Um, in those situations, it's usually people that see us, see that we're not going to call them a piece of shit for, for drinking, and they, and they admit to us, hey uh, – yeah, I could use some help. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I know I do a little bit too much of this. Um, I don't really know what to do. I don't really want to go hire a trainer, you know, with veins popping out of his neck yeah. and a big shiny gym. And like, you know, can you help me? You say, yes, absolutely. You know, so it's whatever that means, you know, gaining muscle, losing fat, just feeling better, you know, maybe helping cut back a little bit. Um, but then, of course, like you were saying, the other side of things is like, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that do work hard on their bodies. Maybe they're CrossFit athletes or they just train really hard. We, we can also be an excuse for them, like, look, you can chill sometimes yeah. a little bit, you know. You don't have to be chicken, broccoli, rice, you know, seven days a week for your entire life. Like, it's okay to freaking have some fun, too. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, so that's it's all over the board. It's the best when you see guys like Dwayne Johnson, right? Because he's got his one cheat meal every day or yeah. once a week where he's just week, pounding yeah. back sushi, muffins, right. pancakes, whatever he can find. Like, find a day or even, like – a meal a day that works for you where it's like you earned it at the end of the day, something that yeah. you actually enjoy. And I'm sure people know by now, but he also owns like the world's, I think it's now the largest uh, tequila brand, Terramana. Is it really? Yeah. That's like insane. that thing hit the shelves and just blew up like right away. It's good tequila. Uh, it's not like the best in the world, but it's because, good like, tequila. Because like 
big names like that come out with their own brands and you're like, okay, yeah. is it really that good? Like proper 12, have you tried? Yeah. Do you like that whiskey? Really. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't like stand out to me. No. But he's, because he's Conor McGregor and he's got the brand, it totally. sells. Totally. Yeah, but I think it's great when you see athletes like that because like LeBron James has a spirit. Uh, Dwayne has a spirit. Like a lot of these guys, yeah. they do that. And, um, and I, you know, you could make the argument they're doing it for sales because they're using their name. But I really do think those guys understand, like, look, I am beating myself up all the time. I'm winning championships. I'm on the road a lot for my family. Like, there are some times where I just want to kind of leave that behind for a minute and just enjoy a conversation like this, and I'm going to sip on something tasty, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's good to see those guys doing that, in my opinion. What's a guy like Andy Elliott? Because if anybody's seen Andy Elliott on social media, the guy's yeah. shredded, right? Yeah. He just has that warrior mentality. Totally. What's his, you know, what his cheat meal plan is like or anything like that? Does he have one? So Andy trains with us. So yeah. we, we do all of his uh, fitness, nutrition, um, help him with habits and all that kind of stuff. He's already a beast on his own, but we've really helped dial him in, like getting rid of seed oils, making sure he's getting enough protein of the right kind of protein, um, and his, his hormones, blood work, all that kind of stuff. So um, he's very consistent. Like he's really, really consistent. Like uh, honestly, I don't think I've seen him have like a quote unquote cheat meal yet um, and he doesn't really drink um, sometimes like if they go to Mexico maybe you know yeah. if, if the things are just right they will because they go down there every quarter but um, he, he really does walk the walk like he he, he leads by example for sure who's someone that you kind of I don't want to say like grew up with but you've seen throughout the years really benefit from this type of you know training this type of mentality where it's like old school will tell you you have to do this, that, that, and that with no real yeah. lack of something, right? It's right. like full 100% discipline all the time where you've kind of developed this mentality. It's like, okay, I can still do the things I want while getting the best results that I possibly can. Who's that one, so, two, three people? That there's two. And it's, uh, it's our two main coaches for Earn It All Academy, Bobby Maximus and Which Adam Nail. Uh, do you familiar with them yet? Mm -hmm. So Bobby Maximus is one of the fittest hunter guys to ever live, according to Men's Health Magazine. Great. And he's also a partner in Clearwater Distillery out of Utah. So him, him and I talk a lot. We've been friends for, and, and business partners for a couple of years now. And one of the things that he helps me with sometimes is like, hey, taking some time out for yourself to, and he'll say this, to even do something frivolous for yourself, yeah. playing cards, playing a video game, doing something that will completely check you out of what you spend most of your you know, brain power and your energy on. Um, so he for sure has benefited from this because if you look at him, he's not on any TRT. He's never done a steroid. His, uh, his body is insane. Like he just fought on the last season of the ultimate fighter. He's 44 years old. He's jacked. He's like 240 pounds. He's in phenomenal shape, but he absolutely lives by the earned booze mentality. He likes to have his whiskey and he loves, uh, Hennessy. Um, and like, uh, is it Hennessy? No, Kavasi. Yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but like, He's a living example that you can do it. He's one of the fittest guys alive, right? And then Adam, our head coach for Earn It All Academy, he's a, he's a disabled Marine veteran. He was blown mm -hmm. up in Iraq. Um, he has a plate in his back. He's a former power lifter. And he actually went through a period of time where he was drinking too much. And he went two years sober. And right about the time that he was coming out of that, he found Earn Your Booze on Instagram. And he was like, dude, you're right. I, I can do this. Yeah. So after that period of time, he got past, you know, the issues he was dealing with. He had some whiskey and he's like, oh, I, I don't have to chug that whole bottle now. He's like, this is it. I can do it. I can work hard and I can do this sometimes. And it's not going to be something that just drags me into the gutter every time. So we became friends on Instagram and now he's our head coach at Earn It All Academy. <laughs> Those are the two guys you want to be your head yeah. coaches too, because they've gone through the ringer. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've gone the through end. it, and they, they lead by example, just like Andy Elliott, but especially when it comes to, like, earn your booze, like, they're all about it. Like, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, because they, we have a system, you know, we, we take care of our, our family, ourselves, our minds, our bodies, and it's, and we don't let this stuff control us. No. You, uh, you were someone in high school that was scrawny build, tall guy. Yeah. Wanted to look bigger, right? Right. I'm probably in that same boat right now. I think I'm a buck seventy. I'm looking to be like a buck ninety. Yeah. By the at least the end of the year. Yeah. As someone who went through that, because there's not a lot of people when you hear people saying like, I want to like really change up my body image. They're like, oh, people are going from 
fat, fat down, skinny, yeah. as opposed to like skinny, like, oh, you look great. You know, it's like, yeah, but we could look better. We could put on, pack on some muscle. Yeah. Uh, trial and error. What was it like for you? Dude, I'm actually really glad you asked this question because I was just about to post about this today. I'm going to make a reel later because you're right, man. Like uh, a lot of people, like when they say they want a body transformation, they're trying to lose weight because mm -hmm. maybe they got themselves fat or out of shape or whatever. Me, I was always the other way. I was always skinny and hated being called skinny. Yeah. I always wanted to be strong. I wanted to be bigger. I wanted. I didn't want to be the you know the skinny kid. And when someone would say something like, "Dude, I've heard this probably a thousand times," oh, Justin, you can eat whatever you want and never put on a pound. I'm like I'm trying to put on a yeah. pound. That's not right. like that's not a nice thing to say. You know what I mean? So like. Um, like everyone's got something that they struggle with, right? Um, especially when it comes to our bodies, we're always trying to like change and improve and everything. And, um, that struggle, that was a struggle with me for a long time, you know, like all the way through middle school, high school, I didn't start putting some muscle on until I was in the Navy. And like, that was maybe like partway through the Navy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, trial and error. I mean, dude, I used to go eat like two Chipotle burritos yep. after the gym. I was taking the mass gainer shakes. I was just eating, eating, eating everything. Gallon of milk every couple of days, like just everything I could do. You ever do. do the GoMad diet? I don't know. No, I didn't go mad. What's a go mad? It's the uh, gallon of milk a day or gallon, oh. yeah, gallon of milk a day for an entire month. I have not done that. That sounds pretty crazy. That sounds cool. Yeah. I but, did it, put on nothing, but I yeah. lost all my stamina. Yeah. <laughs> so not worth it yeah. at all. Yeah, so I tried everything. Um, and even after the Navy, I, I tried some, uh, did some pro hormones, and that blew me up. I got up, yeah. I, I put a lot of weight on, but then I wasn't comfortable there either. Then I was too heavy. I was stretching double XL shirts, but I was like slow and sluggish. Yeah. And I was the biggest guy in the room, but like, I, I was like, this is stupid. Yeah. So now bring it all back around, like really the way I should have been training the whole time is for a capability. Being able to pick up the average woman which in America, which is 170 pounds, and carry that person, you know? Being able to pick up a stone or a log or, or you know, carry something heavy in one hand, you know? Like, mm -hmm. just working on your whole CNS, your central nervous system. That's the way, in my opinion, that men, especially young guys, should be training is for capability. Because mm -hmm. when you train for capability, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get leaner, you're going to get more vascular. You're, so you're going to get the looks you want, but hey, now you can also be confident that if Jessica goes down, you can pick her up, run her two blocks away to the hospital. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, I think that's, that's the way that we like to train a lot of our people. Like we will help you get whatever goal, like if you're trying to add muscle on or lose weight or whatever, but we're also going to help you like really just be super confident in your own body, mm -hmm. you know? Which is something a lot of people struggle with. It is. In any which way or form, right? Yeah. That's something I still struggle with now. Like I was a buck 40 when I graduated high school. Yeah. And it's just like, I look back at pictures, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm very grateful for where I'm at now, but it's like, I know I can do way more. Sure. It just comes down to the proper training and consistency right. um, to get that done. And that's what it comes down to, like working with an expert, like exactly. Adam, Someone and, who knows. Adam and Maximus, yeah. right? They've trained thousands of people, right? And like, like we've already been talking about here, they're real too. Like they understand, like they're not just going to be like chicken, buckwheat, rice, no booze. They're going to actually listen to you, what your goals are, what your lifestyle is like, what your time management is like, and figure out where we can start to make improvements and get you to that goal, you mm -hmm. know? So that's what I love about what we do is like, we, there's no judgment. It's just like, all right, cool. We understand you're going from one place to another. You don't like where you're at. Otherwise you wouldn't be hiring us. Yeah. So cool. We're not going to beat you down for that, but we're going to help you change it. And it's usually down with habits, mm -hmm. you know? So you get an intentional workout plan. You get the right nutrition plan that is, you can keep following. Cause most of the time, like people will get some crazy workout plan, some crazy nutrition plan. They'll do it for like three, four or five days. And then they can't do it anymore. Yeah. It's too much, mm -hmm. you know? So you got to do something like you just said over there is like consistent, something you can continue to do for many months and make it part of your lifestyle. Yeah. Or someone will say like, I want to change. And then five, 10 days in, they're like, oh, I feel great. And then they go yeah. back to the old habits thinking like, oh, I can, totally. I can skip a day here. Yeah. That's what happens with challenges a lot. Like have you ever done 75 hard? Never. So I, I've done 75 hard and I, and I liked it. It made me read a lot of books that, you know, mm -hmm. I had lost, you know, the, my love for reading. So I got that back, but a lot of people will struggle through that. And like the last, you know, 10, 20, five days, three days, two days, one day, they're just like everything they can to finish that challenge. And when it's done, they're just like, Oh, thank God. Yeah. It's over, you know? And, but what happens? They, they regress. You know, because now they're going to take a break. And now they, they did that. They're going to celebrate it. And before you know it, they're like, oh, shit. I think I need to do 75 hard again. Yeah. I fell too far off, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that's why it's more important to actually get with, like, a system 
a program that you can actually incorporate and make your life instead of just like beating yourself yeah. through a challenge. It's crazy because you think towards the end, you'd be way more disciplined to be like, I like this new lifestyle as opposed to like mm -hmm. those first few weeks where I'm sure it's very sure. difficult to get to like day 20, day yeah. 30. That does happen a lot. Like when you, like when I was done with 75 Heart, I didn't want like a drink. I didn't want to like go back to anything because I, mm -hmm. I had all these new habits and everything, but you know, a lot of people, they, they do kind of fall off or maybe they'll keep that. All right, I'm going to keep this going for a couple of days or another week or whatever, but eventually it kind of falls off. And then if you don't have like a real plan to fall into, you don't have an accountability trainer. You don't have like our app, you know, you can keep checking off things and you can kind of stay on track before you know it. You're like, Oh shit, where'd the time go? It's been three weeks and I really haven't done much. You know what I mean? And you start to see your gains go and then you get depressed and then, ah, fuck it. I'll have some pizza tonight. Yep. And it just kind of spirals a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you do something like 75 hard, I highly recommend just commit to the whole live hard program. Do 75 hard. Then I think it's like a, a month or so off or a week off. Then you get into phase one, phase two, phase three, because that is going to carry you for most of the year. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's really what, if you want like real change, like you want to put 20 pounds on this year, like we can absolutely do that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, just, commit to doing like at least six months you know because you don't you don't want to get fast gains and just and you know that's kind of sometimes when you get hurt and then yeah. sometimes you don't really respect it enough you know so if you can actually put it on keep it on build a new lifestyle then when you hit that 190 and it's like you're not just like fighting and you know shoving yeah, down food right. every second to keep that little bit of weight on like when it's real muscle and it's actually there then like dude it's so much more satisfying yeah and it stays it stays and that's yeah. the whole point right we don't want to crash somebody from 300 to 200 pounds you know right away because they're one it's going to suck they're going to hate the whole process yeah. and you don't want to go the other way either because a lot of guys they will they'll shoot steroids they'll eat a ton of food they'll just do all this stuff they'll live super unhealthy they won't give a shit about like if their abs go away because they just want to get big but then what are we doing we're damaging our heart we're different you know damaging yeah. things inside our body and we're actually damaging our minds too because we're not really earning that we're just basically forcing these fast results which goes back to like the whole damn thing of like earn, yeah. earn it all, earn, right? Yeah. Like we want people to earn it and stop looking for shortcuts, stop looking for handouts, stop looking for ways to just get these quick wins, like these quick dopamine hits, you know, like it's okay if it takes a long time. It's okay if things don't go the right way. If you fail, if you have to like go through, you know, massive struggle, that's actually a good thing because you're going to, you're going to appreciate the end result much more. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Everybody says like, ah, oh, it's like the journey's whatever. Like the destination is what I'm truly looking for. And when you finally look back and get those true results in the best way possible, you look back at that journey. You're like, I wouldn't want to change anything no, else. No, dude. Did you, like I did a, I did a reel, I think last year and it was just a culmination. Of, there's a, there's a Joe Rogan clip where he talks about, imagine if you have a camera crew following you around yep. and they were documenting everything you do to share your future success story. So I used that and I went through and I pulled clips and I got done and like I almost wanted to cry looking yeah. at it. You know, I'm like, dude, like even, I forget sometimes that we've done like probably a hundred, probably, no, probably closer to 200 activations. Like we've done events in multiple states. Like we've had all sorts of shirt designs that we've sold and all this and that. I've met so many people. And when you look back on that, exactly what you just said, I'm like, I don't want to change that journey for anything. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, maybe let's say if that had hit right there and we became a global sensation overnight, that would have yeah. been cool. But like, dude, this whole process is really where it's at. It's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. You don't even realize like, not necessarily that you look bad at the start of it, but you're like, oh my God, like I look so much better. Like I didn't realize how much better I could actually look until you actually start putting in the work and seeing the results. Yeah, totally. Like totally. Yeah. And so like, you know, if people are like overthinking it, like, oh man, I don't know when I'm going to start or I need the perfect logo. I need the perfect plan yeah. or whatever. Like just start because chances are six months, a year down the road, you're going to look back and no matter what you do, you're going to laugh at it. You're going to think it was shitty or cheesy or whatever. Yeah. So just start because that whole learning process is really where the magic is. And you just have to start that. On that note, when it comes to being an entrepreneur though, with earn your booze, how many tweaks, how many trials, tribulations, how many... Times did you guys adapt um, when it comes to the business model, yeah. you know, like put like fitness aside and everything. But when it comes to like branding and marketing and social media and making clips, you know, sure. which we'll make from this. But like yeah. how, how much mixing and matching um, went into that with how many people that you guys got on your staff? That's a killer question because um, it's been a crazy roller coaster. So we started uh, late 2017, started doing Earn Your Booze events. So our first one is at uh, Scottsdale Beer Company, which is no longer there. It's like Shea and uh, 101. Mm -hmm. They went out of business during COVID. But we essentially became an event company right away. 
So we had events planned all across the country and even international events down in Mexico. We had a partnership with Malagro Tequila. We were working with uh, Sagamore Spirit. We were working with all sorts of different brands because liquor brands, they want to have like a, a fitness, health kind of kick type thing, yeah. but they can't really do it. So they look at us to do that, right? So that's basically what we did for the first couple of years. So by the end of like the second year of business, I had an entire, the next 2020, the year 2020 planned out with events, speaking engagements, collaborative apparel, like all sorts of special projects all across the country, like for the whole year. So it was, was going to be a huge banner year for us. Like we were just on fire with live news and yeah. Men's Health Magazine and all this kind of stuff, right? And then uh, COVID hit. So to answer your question, that business model that we spent two years building was completely ruined because mm -hmm. all the venues shut down. Then even like I was looking for other venues, like even if we were going to go to parks or whatever, I, I wanted to keep going. Well, all, all of our sponsors, they pulled all of their event money too because they were like, well, we have to do what we need to survive, which means on-premise sales now. So we're not going to do any more special events. Travel was restricted, all that stuff. So that first business, Earn Your Booze, basically events, was destroyed. So I was like, all right, well, what are we going to do? We're either going to, you know, shut down for a while, wait for this, you know, pandemic to be over or whatever. And I was like, no, screw that. We're going to keep going. So I actually refinanced my house and started apparel. So we rented a building down on McDowell Road. And for the next two years, we had to basically figure out how to do e-com, which was absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Because like... Everyone else went e-com too, you know, like all the training uh, for gyms went online, e-com businesses, like that was the only place to kind of like do business for a while, you know? Yeah. So we had to do that. Uh, but I never wanted to be in the apparel business because if, if you, if anyone listening or you know anything about the apparel business, it's not as simple as just making a shirt design or a couple and selling it and then just selling a whole bunch, especially like, like we do, we make our own stuff. If you scale up making your own stuff, that's bigger warehouse, forklifts, shelving, lots of people, shit you don't think about, you know, security systems, um, organization systems, like, you know, really extensive back end yeah. inventory systems, all that kind of shit. So uh, we did what we needed to do for those two years and we made it, you know, we made it through, didn't make a ton of money, but it was better. Like we started from nothing. nothing yeah. So we made it through that. Um, but then coming out of that, like, all right, cool. What are we going to do now? So fast forward a little bit, uh, we've been talking with NFL teams and all sorts of other brands, uh, like, you know, with Andy, through Andy, uh, Andy Elliott and Brad Lee, Real Financial and all these other things. So I just now recently switched the brand over from earnyourbooze.com to earnitall.com because, you know, we, we have much more to offer to people besides just the booze side. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you drink or not. Like, that's just one of our brands. Earn It All now, you can look at that one as like our... That's like our entrepreneur brand. That's our brand for, you know, people that are out there really working hard, but it really is for white collar, blue collar. If you're out there like really trying to like pave your own path or trying to do something big with your life, like we are basically helping you with your fitness and your mindset so you can attack that business. So that was a very long uh, winded uh, answer there, but I think basically we have gone through an insane amount of change, mm -hmm. but the mission has stayed the same. We are still on path for that main mission, which has always been to help people live a healthier, more intentional life. Mm -hmm. So now that we have gone through all that struggle, now we have the Earn It All app on the Apple Store and the That's Android right. Store, and we are basically, you can download it on your phone. It's really, really good. Like it's, I'm very, very proud of it. Now we are helping people. If you, if you drink, we're going to help you earn your booze. If you're an entrepreneur, we're going to help you take care of you first because as entrepreneurs, we often go after the money first, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's it's important. If you don't have cash flow, like what's your business going to do? Um, but a lot of times people forget where the energy comes from, where that strong mind comes from, and it comes from building a strong body and a strong mind. Yeah. So we help people now, basically all across the board, get in shape so they can go after whatever they're trying to do in life. Mm -hmm. And it all started with you and your foundation too, kind yeah. of setting those morals and principles first and realizing like, okay, this is how it's going to be done, not just chasing the money because I want to be an entrepreneur right. and work for myself, right. which a lot of young people struggle with, you know, yeah. and evidently like you're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Oh, for sure. You probably make mistakes on a daily basis being yeah. an entrepreneur, but it takes a long time to get into that mindset of like, Oh, like it's me. It's That's not, right. it's not the factors surrounding me. You know, it's right. not, it's not COVID. It's not this, it's not that. Like, mm -hmm. I need to adapt and make changes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Cause that was a big realization. Like when COVID did ruin the event business, I didn't blame it on COVID. I was pissed, of course, mm -hmm. but it, it identified that I had set 
uh, like too many eggs in one basket. We were just an event company. Like we had apparel, but we weren't doing shit with it. So I was like, all right, we're not going to let that happen again. We need to have solid event business, a solid apparel business, and now a solid training business. And they need to all play together. So if something happens again, and for whatever reason we can't do any e-com, we have two other, you know, things going yeah. on. If we can't do this, we can do that. And, and now we have a beverage out, you know, our, our beer with the Grand Canyon Brewery. So now, like, this is really, like, I think the right way to build a business is to make sure that, like, you're very good at whatever you want to do whenever you start with. But make sure that you're, like, you're not completely all in one basket because we learned, you know, the hard way that that basket can be dumped over. And, like, then what? Then you mm-hmm. got to scramble. You know, you have to have plan A through Z. Yeah. And like people don't realize that, but like you really have to have it in the back of your head. Like everything and anything can go wrong. Was that Murphy's law? Yeah. When things, when it can go wrong, it it will go wrong. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. When did you uh, come up with the, uh, the new line here? So dead hanger pale ale, is this the latest one? Yeah. So I've been, I actually moved back out here to Arizona um, after I was in aerospace to open a brewery Mm -hmm. Um, that didn't happen. I ended up uh, helping James Stratman open peak nutrition in Scottsdale. A uh, good buddy of mine. We had a, had a really good time opening that store. Learned Another a lot there. smart guy, too. Yeah, he really is. Uh, you should have him on if you haven't had I him have. on yet. You have? Oh, I haven't like seen that. Like two years ago, though, so oh, okay. maybe i got to have an update. He's got him. a lot going on. He has his own supplement line now called oh, Modern yeah. Warrior. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so um, uh, where was I going with that? I don't remember. What was your question? Oh, where did that come from? Where did, yeah, where did the, uh, yeah, the beer come from? So no it's podcasting. Yeah, it's yeah. raw and authentic. That's yeah, what I love that's right. That's place. right. Um, so the beer, we've been brewing um, beer with uh, other breweries around the state for a while. Uh, I did move out here, like I was saying, to open a brewery, so I had that background. I went to SDSU uh, Beer School. I was brewing at a Lucky Luke Brewing Company in L.A. before I moved back out here. So I've always wanted to do this, but my brewery never happened because I got into peak nutrition and then Earn Your Booze started. So long story short... Um, I've been working with Grand Canyon Brewery now for a couple of years. We've done bartender competitions, events, collaborative shirts, like all sorts of stuff. And they wanted to come out with something new to the market. They were like, all right, cool. What, what are we going to put out into the market, which is, you know, very saturated. There's a lot of good breweries out there. What can the brewery put out that is going to, like, stand out? It's going to be different. It's going to be unique. Um, and I've always been like, all right, I want my own beer but I don't want to do a brewery anymore. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. we kind of got together. Uh, Alex is a good friend of mine. He's one of the partners at Grand Canyon Brewery. And we were like, yo, how about we do a beer? He's like, you know, we have partnerships already with Safeway and Albertsons. We have mm-hmm. a big distribution network and we love working with you. And it was really our relationship that was like, yeah, we trust each other. We like the brands. We know that they're well received together. Let's do it. So we decided to launch a beer, and uh, this beer in particular, Dead Hanger, um, I named this after a challenge uh, that Sean Whalen gave me for a mm-hmm. dead hang. So uh, I'm a Lions Not Sheep executive yep. coach with Sean. I've been in his group for a couple years, and uh, one time on one of the live calls, he called me out for a dead hang challenge, which if you don't know, it's basically just hanging straight yeah. from a bar. And it looks totally unassuming. It looks easy. The it's, forearms, man. It's hard as hell, dude. Yeah. Fingers, forearms, you get some weird pulling out of your shoulders, your lats, your chest. It's like one of those things, maybe your hips. Like people think that like, oh, you're just hanging there, no big deal. Fifteen seconds in, you're dude. like, oh, this is a lot more than what yeah. I thought it was gonna be. It's rough. So uh, anyways, like we decided, okay, we're gonna put this beer out. What are we gonna do? Well, let's really like, you know, dive into like the earn your booze message, right? Because that's gonna give the brewery something good to market. It's gonna help us get our brand out there. So we went with Dead Hanger Hazy Pale Ale. Uh, this design on the can is one of our uh, best-selling shirts. I'm actually wearing it. It's on the back yeah, of my yeah. shirt. So we took this design, and uh, we decided to make a beer that is a, like, it's not a light beer. Mm-hmm. It's not a seltzer. Like, some people are like, all right, I assume you're going to come up with a blonde or something. Yeah. You know, low ABV, two calories, because, you know, you're the Earn It crew or something like right, that. Right, and I was right. like, no. I want a full flavor, full body, badass beer because we show you how to earn it. Like, I don't want to just earn some, like, bullshit little seltzer. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Or some Michelob Ultra. Like, I want something tasty. Yeah. Something that I'm going to eat with, the like, like, my bison that I killed last year. Mm-hmm. Like, I want something that I'm going to actually enjoy, you know? So we went for this beer, and it's, uh, it is so well received right now. I've heard a lot of people say that it's their favorite beer from Grand Canyon. Um, but we are touring the state doing a dead hang challenge all over the place. We have uh, billboards up all over the valley. You might see them. They're digital billboards. Um, I just got the map last night. It rotates between like 50 or something billboards across <laughs> the state. 
Um, but yeah, this is out now in uh, Safeway, Albertsons, Total Wine, Whole Foods, and a bunch of bottle shops and bars. Um, but if anyone listening or yourself, if you know like, hey, this would be a good place there, you can always reach out to us and we'll get, we'll go talk to them and people will pick this up and carry it. Where can people reach out to you directly? Because obviously social media, your website, but like how, how do they get in touch with Justin? Yeah, 602-396-0277 wow. is my cell. Um, Instagram is Justin J. Cross. And then if you go to any Earn Your Booze or Earn It All social media, you can shoot a DM and it'll get back to me. Oh, for wow. Sure. Yeah. And, and let's talk about the app for a second. Yeah. How difficult, first of all, how difficult is it putting together an app? How long was that in the works? Uh, it took, it took about from the day that we decided to do it with Andy, it took about two months to oh build. Oh my God. So we, uh, we went through a, a platform that's, it's a white high end white label platform that Lifetime Fitness uses, Gold's Gym uses. Uh, but we went and fully branded it. We put our logos everywhere and we took the minds of Adam and Bobby Maximus and put it into this thing. So, because wow. what a lot of trainers do, unfortunately, is like, um, especially if they have like some influence, they will say, hey, come train with me, you pay me however much, and then they give you like a cookie cutter like PDF and kind of like, you know, maybe yell at you once a week or something about, you know, you're a piece of shit because that's yeah. why you're not getting results, you know, something like that. And we're like, no, we want to put the personal back in personal training, and we know that we can do that with this mobile app. So it took us a couple months to build. Uh, we just launched our first uh, group in uh, January, which is going awesome. Uh, we now have a $97 monthly membership, which is absurd. Um, we give $500 worth of nutrition a month for $97, plus all of your workouts, two live coaching calls, your habits. You can track all of your food, your macros yeah. on your app, like everything. Uh, but our goal really is to show people that like you can get in shape. Like it's it's not some crazy secret like you don't have to invest a ton of freaking money like there's no secret gimmicks or like you know you don't need to like wrap yourself in like any you know shock suit or anything yeah. like that like there's really you know obtainable ways uh or attainable results that you can get from from training with people that know what they're doing mm -hmm. you know? and like tracking macros and calories and all that stuff i feel like that's the hardest thing for a lot of people who uh -huh. aren't organized right so like to have an app where it's like okay i can actually like put in food and it'll tell me okay fiber, fat, right. you know, carbs, protein. Yeah. And the thing that's so nice about it too, is like, you know, if you eat some of the same things, like you put your food in there, just track it for, this is what I tell a lot of people, just track your food for a week. It saves all your stuff. So when you go back in to have that same piece of chicken breast or your bison burger or a hot dog or whatever, yeah. it's, it's like a quick reference sheet. You just get it in there and it gets so fast to do it. You can scan barcodes if you have like a protein bar or whatever. Um, but one of the most important things is, is like, I agree, tracking macros is, it can be a pain in the butt. But if I can get someone to do it for a week, it's a real eye opener on what you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know. Like I didn't even know, like I wasn't tracking my macros for a long time. So we got the app and I was like, well, I'm obviously going to use this. I need to know everything about it. I'm going to lead by example with this thing. So I got in there and I started tracking my food and I was like, no shit. That's why I haven't been putting as much weight yeah. on as I want. I'm like 70 grams of protein under, yep. you know, I'm like, I'm under on my calories, my car, like everything. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh damn. You know? Um, so that's, what's cool about having us in there is like, you really get the personal training, the personal side back in personal training. And then you get to see yourself what you're actually doing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's great. And it really opens people's eyes to like, what they're actually doing with their food, with their habits, with their nutrition, or, you know, fitness, everything. What was the worst habit you think you had to get over when trying to put on muscle or just trying to get into the best shape possible? Getting out of my own way. Yeah. Um, I was basically training the way that I had always had success before, which was arm day, chest day, back day, stuff like that. Uh, but when I started training with Adam and Bobby, they started introducing me to things that were like, uh, you know what a yoke is? Mm -hmm. Like a yoke carry, um, like a, a suitcase carry, which is carrying something heavy in one hand as you walk and yeah. then switch hands. Doing these things that were really challenging my whole body, the whole CNS, the whole central nervous system. Once I started doing those and incorporating a lot of like Bobby, or Bobby, body weight stuff from Bobby Maximus, like uh, one of our favorite workouts is Holy Trinity. It's 30 minutes straight with no breaks of push-ups, pull-ups, and dips. So you usually do about, I, I do about five to seven of each, and you just keep going the whole time. So once you start doing that and incorporating these other trainings, like, you know, learning how to lift a big stone, or we train with, like, uh, over at Liberty Performance Training, we, we train by picking up 
dummies of humans. Yeah. Once I started doing that kind of stuff, like, like I can't tell you the last time I did an arm day. Like I just, I have no idea, but like everything just like, I got the body I wanted. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And I wasn't like trying to like add muscle here and there. Like I used to, right. like when I was trying to like train like a bodybuilder, I was focused on capability and then the results came and I started to look the way I wanted. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I feel like at first you're like, there's no way, like you just want to like go back to that old routine of like what oh, yeah. you're doing. It's kind of hard to learn. Yeah. And a lot of people, they struggle with that. So like, you know, when someone comes in to train with us, I just tell them, Hey, look, like we have the best experts on here. Okay. So if you had the results that you're looking for, you wouldn't be with us, you know, but everything you've been doing in your life and this year and everything has got to you where you're at today. Well, if you don't want where you're at today, if you're trying to go somewhere else, forget about what you did before. Learn from somebody new now. Mm-hmm. Now let's do something new. Because like if you're just going to keep doing what you're doing, how you, what do you expect? You expect change to happen? Mm-hmm. Like no, it's not going to work. You know. So we tell people all the time, like no, no matter if you're like stuck on a certain set of macros or if you're stuck on training a certain set, you know, a certain way or whatever. Like, forget that. Work with the people that are now like in your corner and are giving you real intentional programming for your goals and just Mm -hmm. give it a shot. And everybody that does it is just, they're blown away. They're like, they're like, what? I mean, sometimes people say like, Oh, uh, I'm eating too much. This is too much. Like just do it. Trust us. Mm -hmm. We're doing this for a week or two. Then we're going to change this. Like there's a whole system to it. But a lot of times like people will just kind of, they think they know what to do, but they won't admit that what they do has not gotten the results they want. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? It's like they expect not to happen overnight, but you're like, oh, it's bl- this black and white. You eat a, this amount of food, train this amount of, you know, yeah. whatever it is, I'm going to build this weight. Where it's like, okay, you really have to bulk up first, and then you're going to feel bloated, and then you have to cut down, and, like, that's where the training comes in. Like yeah. It's, it, it's a month-to-month process. Totally. Yeah, so once I stopped, like, basically, you know, being hard-nosed or hard-headed, trying to, like, do my own thing, and let these guys training like come in and actually just do it. That's when I was like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I get it. You know, you know what you're doing. Yeah, oh. yeah I mean that that's insane. Especially like going probably going up and down, up and down. You get into a good rhythm, and then your body probably gets used to it, and then you plateau because there's always that stage too oh, yeah. where it's like, oh, I'm not getting the results I did a couple months ago since right. your body's kind of accu- accumulated yeah. to what you're doing. Um, when it comes to knowing your own body because everybody else's body is different you know you'll you'll suggest one thing and it doesn't work out and you're like okay we got to adapt to your training whatever your eating regimen training whatever um who's the most who is someone that came to you and said this is what where i want to be in the next few months and it was just very like you guys had a plan laid out and it just like wasn't working and you couldn't figure out why and then you have to like tap into certain things and try new things Usually when something like that happens, it's because of habits. Mm-hmm. Like you can have the best nutrition plan and the best fitness plan, right? But if you are sleeping like shit, yeah. if you're not hydrating properly, if you're not intentional with your time um, and your stress is up and like, you know, there's a lot of things that can go into like a real transformation, you're going to sabotage yourself. So that's usually where, where all the answers are, you know, because mm-hmm. like, again, best fitness nutrition plan for your goal. Cool. But if you're doing everything else wrong, you're really setting yourself up for failure. So that's why we work so hard on habits. Like every day you log into our app, like there's habits right there. You check them off. We tell you what to eat, what to work out, and the habits that you need to do for that day. Chances are if you follow those habits for a month, two months, three months, they're going to become just part of you, and everything starts to come together at that point. Mm. Yeah. Which is so difficult for people to understand too. Cause like you go through like the same way of yeah. thinking your entire life thinking like, I'm just, this is the way my body is. Or sure. like people like me, oh, I just got a fast metabolism. It is what it is. It's yeah. genetics. Yeah. Especially like, guys that maybe have trained, like maybe you're in their thirties or their forties and they, you know, they, they were in shape at a certain yeah. point, you know, and they know how they did it. Um, they want to keep training like that. And they're, and they're like, yeah, but I'm smashing it in the gym. I'm lifting this, I'm putting up good numbers and everything. But like, why can't I? Well, hey, your body changes, and what else are you doing with your life? Mm-hmm. You might com- be completely sabotaging yourself with what you're doing outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, so we spend a lot of time on that. A lot of it does come down to mindset and intention, which is why I, I love what we do. It's not just a workout program and good luck. We, we beat people up and talk to people a lot about what they do outside of the gym and what they're saying to themselves in their head. That makes a huge difference. You mentioned the uh, the 30 minutes straight of just doing push-ups, pull-ups, 
dips. And yep. dips. So mm-hmm. you said like between like five and seven, go to the next thing just to keep yeah. your body fresh, right? For someone who's never done that before, because the second you said that, I'm like, I'm going to go to the gym today and maybe try that. Yeah. Is it difficult at first? Like, I've, mm-hmm. obviously anything's difficult at first, but yeah. like, were you able to get through the 30 minutes the first time you tried it? Um, I got through the 30, yeah. I, so you can always, like, kind of, um, you can always swap things out. Like, if you can't do five pull-ups in a row or any pull-ups in a row, there's always machines at the gym that will help you assist that, right? Yeah. You can throw a band up on the bar and step on it, you know, to take some weight off. You can get on the assist machine or whatever. But the whole thing is, especially when you start – just keep moving the whole time. Even if you have to drop to your knees for push-ups, even if you're using the assist machine for pull-ups, even if you're doing, you know, dips behind, uh, mm-hmm. you know, your back instead of like regular dips, just keep going because we're, we're training all those muscles and we're training your mind to keep moving for that time. Mm-hmm. So the first time might suck and you might be like, damn, I got through, but I feel like I cheated the whole way because yeah. I had whatever. That's great. You got through it, you know? You kept your body moving. Yeah, you kept yeah. it moving. You kept using the muscles that we wanted you to move, or wanted you to use. And then before you know it, like a couple weeks, month down the road, you're smashing it, like, you know, without the assist. And then before you know it, like, we're, I just love where I got to now. We're like, I can actually go 30 minutes, and I, I'm doing five, five, five the entire time. Mm-hmm. So now we, we kind of we changed that up, and we added in a sandbag carry, and we call that the four horsemen. So now it's Holy Trinity, but the fourth movement is picking up like a decently heavy sandbag, usually about 150 pounds. Pick that up and carry that for 25 yards, drop it, and then get back to whatever rotation you're in. Dude, adding that thing, just that little sandbag carry, just enough for me to get my heart going where I was like, oh, man, okay, now I need to slow down a little bit on pull-ups. But it's all about starting, for one, and two, realizing that you can always do more than your mind thinks you can. Mm-hmm. Like always, especially when you're doing stuff like this, we're doing body weight stuff. Like, and if you have access to the assisted machine type stuff, like you can totally do it. Like, mm-hmm. but it's our mind that tells us to quit. So we basically have to use our bodies to tell our mind to shut the hell up because we can do it. And once you get through it, dude, that you're just like, I did it, you know, like, cool, I can do it. You know, next thing you know, you're like, you're going a little faster. And you're like, maybe I'll do 45 minutes, you know, mm-hmm. like, I'm, you know, like it's cool just to see and feel the progression with your body and your mind. It's like when you develop bad habits, you can't really get out of them. But when you develop good habits like that, you keep your body going and you're feeling great. Yeah. Like the more you do it, the more you're going to attract to that way more. And oh, it's totally. difficult because I'm sure you've been in positions where it's like, oh, I had a great workout. And then you went home and then just like, did whatever bad habit you had, like you said, like getting in your own way. And you're like, how did I get back here? Yeah. You, you have to continue to train your brain to like go back into those good habits. And then yeah. eventually they form over time to where it's just night and day. You don't even think about it. Yeah. You're like, I'm doing it's, this. Dude, it's all your brain. It's all mindset. Like, like Andy Elliott says all the time, like, how are you going to dominate this year? Well, it starts with by having a strong mind. Yeah. Well, how do you get a strong mind? The easiest way is to use your body to build a strong mind. Like that, you know what I mean? So like, especially like when you get into a program, like we do a thing called total recreation It's 12 weeks, you get into that thing. It's, it's all laid out for you. Like what you're doing every single day. When you get into a program like that, at least for me, I look for other things to improve. Like, I'm like, cool. I had it. I checked off everything today. Like that was a killer day. And I'm like, before bed, I'm like, you know, maybe I'm going to steal some of the wife's face cream. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just going to start doing this. Cause why mm-hmm. not? That seems like a benefit, you know, mm-hmm. or, uh, you know what? Um, I'm not going to let that laundry sit there another day. You yeah. Know, like, you just start to look for other things. But then on the flip side, like when you do fall off, a lot of things start to spiral off too. And you say, ah, eh, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. Whatever. I don't care if that's dirty, you know? So it's all your mind. We just basically use our, our training and our bodies to tell the mind what we really need to do in life. Like, mm-hmm. That's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. I, it's such a, a – it, it's – Like when the switch turns on, when you think about that stuff, you're like, oh, like you just have to get into it. Yeah. Be consistent. Like consistency is so, (laughs) it's so easy on paper to say like, oh, this is, this is the plan. This is the game plan. Right. And then you you don't realize your brain just like tricks you into just relaxing for one second. I'm just going to watch, you know, Netflix for an hour on the couch and then that turns into five hours and you're like, well, what happened? Right. Or I I can hit that run tomorrow. You Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's rainy right now. Like. No, dude, if it's raining, get out there. Yeah. If it's, if it's like in an, a less ideal situation, go out there and crush it during that time. Yeah. Like, I love that. Like, it was super humid, like, maybe a couple months ago out here. Like, it sucked. 
Like, and I didn't want to be outside. It was rainy and drizzly, super hot. It felt like Florida, you know, like yeah. we're not used to that here in Arizona. Yeah. Like everyone is just like kind of dying. And I was like, no, I am purposely moving my workout outside today because I want that extra struggle. I want that extra BS because I know when I get through it, I'm going to feel it up here. Probably not going to get any benefit with my body, but my mind is going to be fortified a little bit more by getting into that uncomfortable situation instead of going to the nice, cool, shiny gym. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's people like I go to EOS Fitness, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's other like local ones you could just get memberships for, and you'll see trainers arguably way more out of shape than the people that they're training. Yeah, and it's just like you need to find somewhere like if you really want to conquer these goals like you actually really are dead set on actually making a change and not just talking about it like you're you're not just talking the talk you're walking the walk yeah you got to find people like earn your booze and justin and you know his coaching staff right because yeah. you guys actually have proven results you got the app now which allows you to track everything that you're doing to your credit like you said people don't even realize how little they're actually doing. Like yeah. in your head, you're like, oh, I'm killing it. Like, I don't understand why I'm not getting the results. Right. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm not doing jack shit, <laughs> right? Yeah, and case in, yeah, case in point, there's like, you've probably seen like 10,000 step challenges now. Well, the average person, I think it was in the, in the 60s, walked 20,000 steps a day. Yeah. And now we do challenges to hit, hit 10,000 steps a day. So like, like we completely over underestimate how much effort we're putting out it's crazy, you know? So when you actually track it, even just for a week, you realize, oh, I'm not doing shit. Mm -hmm. I went to the gym and did arms, didn't break a sweat, and no wonder my body's not changing. I didn't really do anything, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I, I, that's a great point. Like people don't really understand what they're eating and how they're living and how they're training. So when you get into a program like ours and you work with our, you know, with our coaches, it's a big eye opener. Man, and you guys, again, got a lot going on. It's the uh, Earn It All app. <laughs> Yes. you guys got going on um this you could find in your local markets right yeah basically everyone that you listed i'm like that's where basically people shop everywhere. that's yeah. where people shop yeah. you guys find this um earn your booze.com as well you guys uh, got the earn it all so, com. so you change it yep. all to earn it yep. and then earn it all academy.com is where you can see our training and you can read about our coaches and all that oh, that's awesome and then yeah. where can the people reach you one more time uh, Justin J. Cross on Instagram or 602-396-0277. Wow, a lot of people don't just give out their numbers, man. Yeah, we, we give that thing out. <laughs>